What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So I posted a video the other week on the college degree tier list where I basically rank different college degrees on whether they're worth it or not. And I definitely made a few engineers mad when I put engineering in A tier instead of S tier. Definitely got a few angry comments about that. And then I also got some really good arguments for why I should have put engineering in S tier. And I totally respect these comments and I definitely see your side of the argument. And then others told me that I should make a video ranking the engineering degrees and so that's what we're doing today. And so here we are, I've done a ton of research on this and studies have shown that in order to get the most out of this video, you have to be engaged with it. And what better way to engage with this video than to absolutely destroy the like button. No, but all kidding aside, this does actually help defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. So I truly do appreciate it if you just give the like button a little tap. And after ranking all of them, I'm also going to basically share with you how you can decide which engineering degree is the best for you. And then I'm also going to tell you if I changed my mind and I would now put engineering in S tier instead of A tier. Now, I also only included the top 11 most common engineering degrees. There's a bunch of like really random kind of like combination ones that I didn't include on the list because again, this video would just go way too long. So first on the list is going to be chemical engineering and what they do in a nutshell is they basically apply the principles of chemistry of course but also physics and all sorts of other sciences in order to solve problems related to food drugs and a lot of different other types of products now this one was number three on the list in terms of pay so it came in at about hundred and four thousand nine hundred dollars per year in terms of median salary they were also number three on the list uh, tied for number three with a job outlook of of about 6%. And by job outlook, I mean how much the job is expected to grow in the next 10 years. And the average for all professions uh, with job outlook is generally around four to 6% over a 10 year period. So this is on the higher side of average. But when it comes to engineering jobs, this is actually above average. It's quite good on the list. It's tied for number three. Now pulling these stats from bls.gov, the amount of jobs out there right now in the United States of America is about 33,900. And that is not very good on this list, unfortunately. That actually comes in at about number eight. And it's generally a good idea to go into a field where there's a lot of jobs, just because with more jobs come more opportunities. The chances that you'll have to move somewhere just to you know, get a job are much lower. You'll probably be able to find a job in your hometown or wherever you wanna live. And so overall, generally, it's just much better to have more jobs available. But still, on the other hand, chemical engineering and chemistry in general is making a comeback and it is one of those careers where companies do covet the skill set that you get from a chemical engineering degree. So it's still not a bad choice overall. It's relatively flexible. You can jump around and kind of do a bunch of different jobs that are related to chemical engineering. So, you know, the stats that BLS provides aren't necessarily completely accurate because you might get a chemical engineering degree and then you go work in something that's kind of unrelated but the skills that you learned help you a lot but because of the fact that there's not that many jobs there's a really good chance that you might have to move somewhere you know there might not be a really awesome amazing uh, career just wrapped in a little package with a bow on it um, waiting for you right after you graduate in your dream city so for all of these reasons I'm gonna go ahead and put chemical engineering in a tier still very solid but it's not the best on the list. Next on the list is going to be electrical engineering. And I think most people kind of get what you do with electrical engineering. So I'm not really gonna go into that, but the median pay is nearly six figures at about $99,000 a year. And that ranks about number four on the list. Now there are a ton of jobs for electrical engineers in the United States, almost 10 times as many as there are for chemical engineers, about 330,000. The only problem is that the job outlook in terms of you know how much they expect it to grow in the next 10%, isn't nearly as good. It's only about 2%. This ties for about six on the list. So it's kind of in the middle range, if not like a little worse than the middle range. But electrical engineering is also one of those jobs that's very flexible and you will probably be able to get a job wherever you live or wherever you want to live. If you get bored being a electrical engineer, there's a lot of other job opportunities that you can move into. And even though the growth is only predicted to be about 2%, 2% of 330,000 
is still more than 6% of 30,000. So there's still a lot of job openings that are going to come up in the next 10 years. And we aren't gonna stop using electrical devices anytime soon, so this is just a degree that seems extremely practical. This one is definitely going into A tier. Next on the list is going to be aerospace engineering, and in a nutshell, it's all about engineering and designing aircraft, spacecraft, rockets, uh, missiles, satellites, drones, all sorts of things that fly through the air or fly through space. Now it's gonna come in at number two in terms of pay at about 115,200, which is just excellent. However, it does have a pretty low growth rate over the next 10 years at only about 2% and that is a little bit troubling. It comes in at around number five for jobs at around 67,200 available jobs in the United States right now. So that's pretty good, it's kind of average, but better than some of the other ones. And this is definitely one of those majors where in terms of the jobs you can get, it's kind of feast or famine. In general, there tends to be more jobs in this field when we're in a wartime situation or something along those lines. So right now you could kind of say that it's a little more famine than feast probably, but I'm still gonna go ahead and uh, put it in A tier. It's gonna sneak into A tier just because the pay is extremely good. Next on the list is going to be mechanical engineers and this one is going to rustle some jimmies for sure. Mechanical engineering is one of the lowest paid on the list at about 87,300. It has an average growth of about 4%, which is tied for fifth, so it's kind of middle of the road in terms of growth. However, it does have quite a few job openings, one of the best on the list at about 312,000. And honestly, mechanical engineers are sort of jacks of all trades. You see them working in a bunch of other different industries that are not necessarily necessarily related to mechanical engineering. So for instance, they're taking a lot of the biomedical engineers jobs. It's also the most popular engineering major, which means you see the most amount of people going into it. And so therefore there's going to be a lot more competition. So this one is going to have to go into high B tier status. And you know, if this was a list of just general majors, it would probably be A tier, but on a list, you know, with other engineering majors, it's gonna have to be B tier. It's just not as good as some of the other ones. Next on the list is going to be industrial engineering. And in a nutshell, they basically help to design and improve processes within a business or an organization. Generally, these processes include some sort of, you know, either hardware, software, or machines, something along those lines. Now, in terms of pay, it's actually one of the worst on the list at around number nine, and it's only about $87,000 a year. However, it does have extremely good future growth at 8%. And you know, you can see this with everything being automated and optimized. You can see how valuable this sort of skill set that they teach you when you get an industrial engineering degree would be. 8% is actually the second best on the entire list, so that is excellent. And then on top of that, there's a ton of jobs out there at about 284,000. So there's a ton of jobs out there right now, and they're expecting a lot more job openings in the future. That is a really good combination, and that sort of kind of makes the low pay a little more bearable. So this one doesn't pay quite as well as a lot of the other ones, but this also seems to be a relatively flexible engineering degree. You know, businesses across all different industries and in all different you know countries need this particular skill set. And so even though it doesn't pay that well, um, all of the other things are pretty good. And for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into B tier. Next on the list is going to be civil engineering. And civil engineering is all about designing and uh, building different infrastructures as well as systems. There's also a little bit of oversight in this career path, which means if you're more of a hands-on person who kind of wants to be on the job where the action is, this might be a better one for you to go for. It's dead last in terms of pay at just over $86,000 a year, but it has pretty decent future growth at about 6%. So, you know, this one's not too bad. It also has a ton of job openings at about 326,000, which I believe is actually number one on the list or maybe number two. So this is a pretty good option as well, especially if you're more of a hands-on person who wants to be where the action is. Uh, this one is gonna go into B tier. Next on the list is going to be biomedical engineering. 
And this one is one of the lower paid on the list at about 88,500 a year. Now, biomedical engineering is probably one of the most interesting ones on the list because nobody really knows what's gonna happen with its future. But basically what they do is they combine the concepts of engineering with medical sciences, and you know they create devices, equipment, software, et cetera, that could help people with their health. And this is one of those fields uh, where honestly, unfortunately, there's not too much work right now. There's only about 19,800 job openings, which is one of the lowest on the list. And on top of that, it only has an average growth rate of around 4%. Now, if it was a ton of job openings, like 100,000 or 200,000 with a 4% growth rate, that would be a lot better. But unfortunately, there's only about 20,000 job openings. It also doesn't pay very well at about $88,500 a year um, median salary. And then the other issue with this degree is it's not very flexible. You might be stuck working for particular types of companies you know, companies that create medical devices, for instance, and there might not be as much flexibility or maneuverability, which means you aren't going to be able to hop jobs as easily. And then also, you know, your skill set probably won't transfer as well to different industries as some of the other engineering degrees. And then on top of that, a lot of the other engineering degrees can actually break into the biomedical engineering industry. And so you can't really break into their jobs, but they can somewhat break into your job. And that is a big problem. If you do go into biomedical engineering, you'll likely have to move to a particular place in order to get a good job. But honestly, this one is the dark horse on the list five, 10, 20 years from now, this one might be the hottest one on the list. It might be S tier, but unfortunately right now, there's just not enough uh, positive information that I could gather doing my research that was going for it. And so for that reason, on this list, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put it into F tier. Again, if this was just all degrees, you know, if we're, we're ranking all degrees, this one would probably be, I'd say B tier, but since we're comparing different engineering degrees, I'm gonna have to put this one in F tier. Next on the list is going to be environmental engineering, and they basically uh, use engineering principles in order to develop solutions to different environmental problems. Now, they make about 87,600 a year, which is on the lower end on this list, it's around number seven or so, and they have an average growth of about 5%, which is okay, but the only issue is there's only about 55,000 job openings right now, so so the 5% average growth honestly isn't that good. And honestly, this one is great and all, but compared to the other engineering degrees, I'm gonna have to put this one in D tier. Next one on the list is going to be marine engineering. And if you just look purely at the stats, it looks really good when you first see it. I mean, you got $92,500 a year, which is one of the better ones on the list. You've got a 9% future growth, and that sounds pretty freaking good. That's actually, I believe, the best one on the list. But the problem is the jobs are extremely limited at only 11,700 jobs. That is the dead last lowest on the list. And the 9% future growth sounds great and all, but when we're only talking about a 9% future growth from 11,000 jobs, it doesn't sound nearly as good. Now, the other obvious one about this is you are not very flexible if you get this degree. You know, you're gonna have to be moving and working in very specific places for very specific types of companies. And let's say you graduate with a degree and you decide you absolutely hate the ocean. You like get seasick or something like that. Well, you're kind of screwed because you're stuck with a degree. It's not nearly as flexible as a lot of the other engineering degrees. So even though it has really good stats, except for, you know, the job openings, this one is really good for you as long as you do your research. You really have to make sure this is what you want to do with your life. Um, you really have to know what you're getting yourself into. 
Um, but overall, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in C tier. Okay, so next on the list is going to be computer engineering. And I think this one is pretty self-explanatory in terms of what they do, but they make about $114,600 a year, which is number three on the list. That is very, very good. It's just a tiny little bit behind aerospace engineering. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe next year or the year after it actually catches up with aerospace. So very, very good. Also, it's got a 6% growth rate, which is good for engineering. Um, it's about average on the higher end of average for normal jobs, but that's actually very good for engineering. And then you got about 64,400 total jobs available, and that's pretty decent. Now, what really sets this one apart, it's got good stats, but what truly sets it apart is it has an overlap with computer science which in my opinion in the next 20 to 40 years is going to absolutely blow up. Now I know that computer engineering is more focused on hardware, but you still have to have a very good idea of how the software side of things work in order to be an effective computer engineer. And so the skill set that you have, that deep understanding of how computers work is something that a lot of companies really covet. And I know a lot of companies like to hire computer engineers to become software engineers. So it's very easy for you to transition into probably the best industry in the world, which is tech. And if you don't wanna transition into tech, there's still a lot of job opportunities out there. This one, in my opinion, is probably one of the most flexible um, it's, it's really good on every single ranking. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in S tier status. And I decided for this video that I'm only going to have one in S tier. And so that is the one that goes into S tier. Now, the next one on the list is going to be petroleum engineering. And again, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna probably get hired by one of the big gas companies or something along those lines. But again, insane, insane salary of $137,100 a year. That is just, for a four year degree, I mean, that is just totally insane. It, it might even be the very best one that you can get for a four year degree. I mean, that is just crazy. It's by far the number one on the list by a mile. There's only about 33,500 job openings, which is a little bit low for the list. And then it also only has about a 3% uh, growth rate, which again, this is kind of average on this list, but it's definitely lower than average in terms of all jobs. However, there's a reason that the pay is so good. They wouldn't be paying people that much if this skill set wasn't one that's extremely coveted by certain companies. You know, it's not gonna be very flexible. You'll end up having to work for particular types of companies, most likely. You'll probably end up having to move somewhere where these companies are, you know, around. However, uh, the pay is extremely good. Natural gas isn't going to be going away in our lifetime, or at least our, our work span lifetime. It's not gonna be going away anytime soon. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put petroleum engineering into A tier. Now, the reason that I put engineering as a whole as A tier instead of S tier, well, really there's two main reasons. The first one is that the job outlook for engineering in general just isn't that good. As you noticed on this list, the highest one was 9%, and a lot of them were around three, 4%, which is average at best. It's really more on the lower side of average. Now, compare this to a degree in the health field, for instance, like physician's assistant, where they have a 31% expected growth rate in the next 10 years with 118,000 jobs, which is quite a few. Now, that is one of the higher ones on the list in terms of health, but you see when you look at health careers in general, a lot of them are gonna be over 10%, 15%. They're excellent in terms of the jobs that they expect to open in the next 10 years. But it's not just the health field. You can also look at technology, for instance. You've got you know, computer scientists, they're expected to grow about 16% in the next 10 years. And software developers are expected to grow at about 21% in the next 10 years. Now, if you compare this to the best on the engineering list, which was 9%, or the average, which was around, I'd say, I don't know, 4% or so, you can see that the average, you know, career in technology or the average degree in health 
has a much higher job outlook, much better job outlook than engineering does. Now, of course, there are exceptions. There are health careers that have a very low job outlook. Um, but I think in general, job outlook is one of the most important metrics you can look at because I really think that when you see something that has a very good job outlook, that means that in the future, the salary is gonna be increasing because if they need a bunch of people in that job, if a bunch of jobs are gonna be opening up, that means there's going to be more competition for you if you're going into that field. And so therefore, they're probably gonna to have to pay you better. It also means that your quality of life and your job satisfaction is gonna end up being quite a bit better in these sorts of fields just because of the fact that your employer knows that they have to treat you really well because there's so much competition for you. If they don't treat you well, if they work you like 60 hours a week when you don't wanna work 60 hours a week, um, you can just quit the job and find another job relatively easily. So I guess it really just comes down to what you personally prefer, you know, is quality of life more important to you or is making like a ridiculous amount of money and living on an oil rig more important. Now, the second reason that engineering, in my opinion, gets A tier status, and this one, you know, pat yourself on the back if you're an engineer, but engineering is incredibly difficult. And you really just have to be honest with yourself, whether you're an engineer or whether you're not an engineer, most people probably don't wanna put themselves through um, undergrad and engineering. I mean, I had quite a few friends in engineering and these poor guys would just like, they look like raccoons, they'd be studying all the time. Um, they didn't really have as much fun. They didn't go out and have fun during college like most other majors did. It is incredibly difficult not only do you have to be a very hard worker, but you really do have to be pretty intelligent for most of the engineering degrees. Probably, I would say, above average intelligence. And so, you know, this channel, I know there's a lot of smart people on this channel, but there's probably a lot of people that watch my videos that maybe don't want to put themselves through hell in undergrad, or maybe they're just average intelligence or maybe they're slightly above average and they want to go into a job that maybe isn't quite as difficult. And so you really do have to admit that the average person, and again, we're talking about medians and averages here, the average person probably isn't going to be able to do engineering. And if you look at the dropout rate for engineering, it's a heck of a lot higher than for a lot of the other majors. Other degrees that I talk about a lot, like computer science, for instance, they're pretty difficult, but you have to admit they're definitely not as difficult as an engineering degree or a physics degree. And then let's just talk about the fact that a lot of 18 to 22 year olds just simply don't have the maturity or self-control to put themselves through four years of engineering school. Even though they might be extremely smart, they might be a really hard worker, they just haven't quite gotten to the point in their life yet where they can have the self-control to do all the studies and do really well during engineering school, which is something they'd have to do. So if you are somebody who's extremely intelligent, you know, and you are a very hard worker, then, you know, you can take that second one off the list and then maybe you can say, hey, engineering is S tier if you can actually make it through, but it really just comes down to opinion overall. And as for how to go about choosing which engineering degree is right for you, Honestly, all of them are pretty solid. I'd say the worst one on the list is still B tier. And honestly, you could probably say that if you're willing to move somewhere, you know, if you're willing to move to a place where there's like a, you know, an oil uh, field or something like that, get uh, hired by Saudi Aramco or something along those lines, you can basically choose any one of these on the list as long as you're willing to move to where the jobs are. But if you're somebody who has a specific city that you wanna live in, that's something you really want to keep in mind. So that's really the first thing I would think of. If there's a specific city that you wanna live in or a specific place, or maybe you wanna live in a bunch of different cities, you wanna have that freedom of being able to say, hey, 10 years from now, maybe I wanna live in California, but right now I wanna live in Florida or something. Then I would probably go for one of the degrees that is a little bit more flexible. So I talked about these during the video, you know, you've got industrial, you've got civil, you've got mechanical, 
um, electrical engineering, a lot of these types of degrees. There's a lot of jobs out there. And then they're also pretty flexible in terms of how you know, your skill set potentially could be something that people in unrelated industries want to hire you for. Then once you've considered that, I'd really just go for where your interests and your natural talents lie. So I've heard a lot of people are, you know, very good at mathematics, like very heavily math based. Maybe they're good at mechanical engineering, for instance, but they really struggle when it comes to electrical engineering, right? For some reason, your brain just doesn't work in that way or maybe chemical engineering or biomedical engineering, all the uh, chemistry classes that you have to take. Maybe you don't really like those classes very much or just your brain doesn't really work in that way. So these are the sorts of things that you really want to keep in mind. And as you're going through high school or, or undergrad, if you're deciding which one you're trying to do, these are the sorts of things that you want to pay attention to. Where are your natural talents and generally where your natural talents lie are also going to be the places that you really enjoy as well. So you wanna talk about which ones you enjoy, uh, where your natural talents are, and then figure out which degree matches that the best. And I'd really just suggest either talking to engineers, maybe talking to somebody who's a professor at an engineering school and kind of telling them what you're interested in and what you're passionate about, and then they can kind of guide you in the right direction. Now, there's quite a bit of research that you can do online by looking in forums and all that sort of thing, and I definitely think that you should do that look everything up on uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, look all the stats up, make sure you have all the numbers right and you're doing your research, you're going into something that does have jobs and you're actually able to get a job and have a good career with, of course. But like I say in all the videos, nothing beats talking to real people. So I really recommend reaching out to people on LinkedIn, you know, looking up people uh, in your network, maybe reaching out through your network or maybe looking up people who live in your city and then just very nicely asking them if you can either shadow them or just ask them a few questions, you know, something along those lines, maybe ask them if you can buy them coffee or take them out to lunch. Uh, that's always a really nice gesture. But overall, you know, engineering in general is a very good choice. I'm sorry I made some of you mad by putting it in A tier, but I hope you understand why I think that and I'm not changing my mind. Some of them are definitely S tier, I'd say, uh, about half of them at least are S tier, but some of them just are not S tier because there's not enough job openings and for all those reasons that I already went over. So stay calm, do your research, and I think you'll be just fine. But overall, make sure you check out these videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and then comment down below any ideas that you have on this video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.